from National Yanmin Chanto Chantan University, which was recently united, I guess. Uh, Dr. Lo is a structural biologist, long been devoted to developing new protein engineering techniques and related computation algorithms. And recently he published several papers on protein circuit, secondary structure prediction and structure prediction for cyclically permitted proteins. And he will analyze whether the 50-year-old dream of scientists about protein structure prediction has been achieved or not. <laughs> okay, so if you're ready, please start waiting. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First, I would like to say thank you, Wadaru, for the nice introduction. Uh, the last time we met uh, was about 10 years ago, right? But trust me, in my heart, you are still my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, I would like to thank the GIW for giving me this opportunity uh, to share with you something about protein structure prediction. Today, Okay, sorry. Today, uh, my lecture is trying to answer this question. Has our 50-year-old dream in protein structure prediction has been achieved? <clears throat> uh, this is a Netflix film recording a real story about a remarkable event in the development of artificial intelligence. Uh, in 2015, Google acquired an AI company, DeepMind, and developed the algorithm AlphaGo to challenge high-class Go players in the world. Uh, since about 2015, in 2017, they defeated all the best human players in this world. This event uh, indicates that the artificial intelligence made by humans may be compatible with human intelligence in some field. <laughs> Soon, they develop an algorithm called AlphaFold and attend the International Protein Structure Prediction Competition in 2018 and defeated all the previous best algorithms. <laughs> and uh, two years later, in 2020, the AlphaFold 2 not only defeated itself, but achieved an astonishing 87% score in the GDT. Suddenly, news all around the world reported the breakthrough made by AlphaFo2. This Nature uh, article even said that the AlphaFo will change medical science, change bioengineering, and even change everything. In Taiwan, we also have a lot of information. At that time, if we input protein structure prediction and DeepMind into Google, we will have a lot of hits. I'm sorry for the Chinese text. What I want to show you is the repeatedly showing 50 year, 50 year, 50 year, and 50 years. Why is that? Because scientists has, have dreamed of predicting the protein structure by amino acid sequence since the 1970s. And about 20 years ago, scientists had estimated that the upper limit of structure prediction in GDT is about 88%. So this 87% is so approaching the upper limit. This is why many people said uh, our long 50-year dream in protein structure prediction has been achieved. Why is protein structure prediction, or PSP, important? Of course, I can give you a lot of reasons and examples, but I think this one is the most convincing. Uh, we humans have been suffering from COVID-19 for how long? About three years, right? Right now, we have already about 20 uh, COVID-19 vaccines curing drugs and the neutralizing antibodies. But do you know 
how long it usually takes to develop a drug or a vaccine. About 10 years, right? How come we now already have so many drugs for COVID-19 and vaccines in just three years? This is because uh, the application of new neurological technology, uh, I, I, uh, uh, not neuro, sorry, uh, uh, immuno, sorry, immunosciences and uh, the application of EUA. <laughs> but actually, in the early 2020, when the WHO announced that the COVID-19 has been spread out through the, throughout the world, uh, there were several groups of structured biologists teamed up to predict all the protein structures of the COVID-19 virus. They established several databases to, uh, to, to, to publish their predicted structures and evaluate the structures predicted by other groups to increase the reliability of their data. Google also uh, participated in this action. And uh, those databases were open accessible to anyone who were developing drugs and the vaccines. This is one of the most important reason we have so soon so many drugs and vaccines to conquer COVID-19. Let's come back to this question. <clears throat> has our dream about protein structure prediction has been achieved? <clears throat> First, perhaps we need to know uh, protein, secondary structure in, uh, protein secondary structure prediction is an important intermediate step or concept applied in most protein tertiary structure prediction systems. Uh, so if we know more about protein secondary structure prediction, we may be able to answer this question. <laughs> this is the conventional strategy people used to predict protein secondary structure, or SSP, in the recent 20 years. First, we need to perform, uh, sorry, we need to perform sequence similarity search uh, of the query sequence against a target database containing a lot of known protein sequences to calculate a scoring matrix called the, posi the position specific scoring matrix, which is the fundamental prediction feature set for machine learning algorithms to make prediction. <clears throat> this strategy is actually also applied in the AlphaFold algorithm and the AlphaFold 2 algorithm. In recent years, my lab published several papers on protein secondary structure prediction. Uh, with these discoveries, maybe we can answer the big question of my lecture later. <coughs> the first, we develop a general procedure to enhance the speed of all machine learning based secondary structure prediction algorithms. <clears throat> As I mentioned, to make secondary structure prediction, we need a large target sequence database. It is easy to imagine that the larger the sequence or the more sequences we have, we can uh, make more accurate prediction. But the computation time will also increase. People tend to use very huge sequence databases in SSP. However, I observed that in the beginning, the accuracy of SSP indeed increased as the number of protein sequences available increased. But in recent years, the accuracy seems to be saturated. So I speculated that it may not be totally true that using more sequences will get higher accuracy in SSP. So I made an experiment to see the behavior of the state-of-the-art SSP algorithms in challenge of increasing size of databases. <clears throat> 
uh, and they all show the same tendency. And this is the average data. As we can see, if we have larger data set, the computation time will increase exponentially, but the accuracy will saturate as long as the number of sequences is more than 500, uh, 5 million sequences. <coughs> Let's reverse this figure. Then it reads, it says that <coughs> if we cut down the number of sequences, we can greatly cut down the running time of secondary structure prediction. But the uh, accuracy will be slightly uh, decreased. Yeah, let's in, enlarge this part. As we can see, only slightly decreased. And this is the real data. Yeah, I know if we try to publish this method, uh, people will say, oh, no matter how little it is decreased, no matter how minor it is decreased, so your method is not perfect. Okay. <clears throat> Fortunately, it comes to me that to reduce the size of the data set, uh, in addition to random sampling, we can also do homology reduction. And this is what we did. We reduced the homology of the sequence database from the 90% sequence identity to 80% to 25%. And it's very interesting. The accuracy was increased. And what's more interesting is there is one factor will decrease the accuracy. Another factor increase the accuracy. And the extent of the decrease and increase are the same. So we found a perfect balancing point between the accuracy and the speed. Using our method, how much fold the speed of SSP can be enhanced? More than 25 folds. Uh, and as a scientist, I was not satisfied with just knowing the performance, but trying to figure out why. I hypothesized that the accuracy of SSP is or should be uh, influenced by the quality of the PSSM, or st uh, be specifically the information density of the PSSM. So I calculate the information density of PSSM using the, using the Shannon entropy. And this is the experimental result. As the sequence database size, in, uh, excuse me, as the sequence database size increased, the Shannon entropy of the PSSM increased. So does the accuracy of SSP. In this experiment, when the homology reduction of the database become more and more severe, the entropy of PSSM also increased. So does the accuracy of SSP. Therefore, the information density may be the key factor to the accuracy of SSP. If this is true, if this is true, we may be able to develop a new algorithm uh, to increase the information density of the PSSM. And uh, this will increase the accuracy in SSP. And this is what we, deve <laughs> what we developed. Sorry. <clears throat> I'm too nervous. <laughs> we developed an algorithm to transform a traditional amino acid-based PSSM into secondary structure element-based PSSM. Uh, because our PSSM is much condensed uh, than the traditional one, so the accuracy may be enhanced. The actual procedure was very complicated. Let's simply go to the result. Uh, if uh, uh, we tested the seven state of the art SSP algorithms, and the layer average accuracy was about 81%. How about ours? 
91%. Wow. We were very happy and uh, submit this paper. And the reviewer said, we don't believe you. <laughs> because the theoretical upper limit of protein secondary structure prediction is 88%. Your performance is much higher than the upper limit. We don't believe you. OK, so we took some time <laughs> to study the theoretical upper limit of SSP. <clears throat> Why there is an upper limit of SSP? The most important reason is that proteins are not static objects. They are dynamic. They can move. They can rotate, vibrate, and change conformation in physiological conditions. Uh, let's see this example. This is homogeneity. When there is no calcium atoms, the structure is quite stretched. But when there is calcium atom, the commodity catch the calcium atoms and become a little bit globular in the head group. And if we add a small peptide called M13 into this system, the commodity even become totally globular. They are the same protein, but they can have very different structure in different conditions. Now that even the same protein with the same sequence can adapt different structure, the prediction of protein structure cannot be perfect. So to estimate the upper limit of protein secondary structure prediction, we have to measure the structure.